Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 In our penultimate monologue, we hear two views of the arrest of Jesus in the garden. The first from the soldiers and the second from the disciples. Strangely enough, there are some striking similarities. Remember to listen with an open mind and to find value and empathy with the characters. We set off into the darkness not knowing what to expect. We did not have much light. We were told we were going to arrest the King of the Jews, but we had no idea what that meant. If it meant that he would have his own guards, there would be a fight. Fights in the dark are risky things. Torches get dropped. You can easily hit your own people. And how would we recognise the man we want? All these Galileans look the same, especially in the dark. Judas, who has called us out, knows. But how will we tell? The king, if that's what he is, won't be wearing a crown. We can be sure of that. Some people say our man is the son of God. How can we tell that? In the end, events took us by surprise. We did not need to search. He came to meet us and asked us who we were looking for. He looked composed, almost serene. All the people around him were hiding their faces in their cloaks, several quite terrified of us, which we're used to, of course, being part of the job. But he stood with his face uncovered. Yes, that's me, he said. If he is the son of God, we saw that night the son of God surrender himself to human power. We had set out into the darkness, not knowing what to expect. We stood around together in the garden, full of anxiety. We had just had the Passover meal with Jesus. It was quite different from any meal we had shared before. He had begun by washing our feet. He insisted he take the task of the lowest servant, despite Peter's objections. We shared bread and wine as usual but this time it felt completely different. There was something special about what Jesus said and did this time, which we could not then understand. Then we went out to the garden. We expected Jesus to be arrested at any time that week, and some of us had weapons, but most of us were afraid for Jesus and afraid for ourselves too. Here we were together in the dark. How would the police recognise Jesus when he came? And what if one of us got arrested too? Perhaps they wouldn't recognise him in the dark and we would be able to sneak away. But it did not turn out like that. Events were to take us by surprise, as they did over all those three days. When we saw the police coming, we had no doubt that Jesus would be recognised because we saw the face of our own companion, Judas, to the lanterns. He would know Jesus, even in the dim light of the torches. But Judas did not need to do anything. Jesus came forward himself. And when they said they were looking for Jesus of Nazareth, he replied, yes, that's me. We could scarcely bear to look. 
Here was the Son of God surrendering himself to human power. Lord God, we tremble to think that it was one of Jesus' own friends who betrayed him. One who sat by him, who broke bread with him. Give us strength, we pray, to walk faithfully with Jesus, even when the road we walk is rocky. Even when the message of the cross seems like foolishness, and even when we feel betrayed. You, Lord, are always faithful. We stumble, we become lost, but you are steady and sure. Give us the grace to endure our troubles and reveal to us the glory of your kingdom through your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.